time for our week ending strategy session with political commentator Jerry Nichols coming to us from downtown Toronto. In Regina, we have Sally Hauser, a senior consultant with Navigator, and with me here in studio, Greg McEachern from Environics Communications. Uh, we're going to start today with a poll that Angus Reid put out asking whether or not Canadians would vote for Jagmeet Singh. They note, of course, that he is a man uh, of Sikh faith who wears a turban. Seven in ten, 69%, said they'd simply never heard of Jagmeet Singh. Uh, and they have heard his name, but don't know anything else about him. 50% of close friends and family members, they say, would not vote for such a person. Uh, and you can see some of the other numbers there. Obviously, interesting here, Greg, that you know, you're talking about one-third of Canadians saying they wouldn't vote for somebody because they're wearing a turban. That raises some interesting questions about Canadian society. Raises some concerns. It's a bit disappointing. Uh, I think we were at a really interesting time. The last couple of years, we have a cabinet that's split equally between men and women, and we have our first visible minority as the leader of a, of a major party in Canada. Contrast that to some of the politics that's going on south of the border. I think it's, it's good for Canada. I think overall, um, I've met Jagmeet Singh twice now, once uh, this week on Wednesday night, once last year. He knows my political stripe. He has tons of time to talk. He's not one of those politicians who is looking over your shoulder. And I know liberals are a little bit nervous because he's got that kind of appeal that Justin Trudeau had. So I think much like Andrew Shears, people need to introduce him to, to Canadians. So do the NDP. One other thing I would say about the NDP, within their own caucus, um, MPs like Pierre Nantel. I like Pierre as a gregarious guy, but he said in September that religious symbols, such as the turban, were incompatible for the people of Quebec, that it was ostentatious. This is a province, I remind you, where the National Assembly has a crucifix hanging in it. So I think they need to do some kind of, not necessarily house cleaning, but are you in or are you out? Nantel has talked about running for the Parti Québécois, mused about it. So I think they need to start with their own caucus and then work out towards Canadians. Hmm. Jerry, where do you think this is coming from? Is it is it a place of ignorance? Is this uh, a sign that there is still significant racism in our society? Is it something that the NDP can overcome by introducing Jugmeet Singh, the person, the leader, so people are thinking about him and, and see the turban as part of him and part of his identity, which it is, instead of sort of this knee-jerk reaction that some people seem to be having. Yeah, Mercedes, I don't think uh, the results of this poll are all that surprising. Uh, we are a, a, a tribal species, and politics is basically a tribal exercise. So often people will say, I'm going to vote for somebody who's like me. Okay, sometimes that means somebody from my party. Sometimes that means somebody from my region. Sometimes it means somebody from my religion. And the, uh, the opposite is true. They will not vote for somebody who is not from the region, from their party, from their religion. That's just the way politics has always been. Can, can the NDP overcome this? The good news for them is yes. What they need to do is get Singh out there and get people to like him. If he is a likable, charismatic personality, people will vote for him no matter what his religion is because people want to vote for people they like. You know, people voted for Ronald Reagan who were Democrats because they liked him. People who were New Democrats voted for Justin Trudeau because they liked him. If people, if the NDP can make a, a, a sing into a likable character, he can overcome those tribal barriers. Well, Sally, you know, you know, obviously, many NDPers. Uh, there were suggestions he couldn't win in the NDP either, especially in Quebec, uh, because he was a Sikh man wearing a turban. Obviously, those aren't true, because he's now the leader of the party. Uh, you know, society is changing and moving, but obviously there's some remnants there of people who are still not comfortable with those who don't look like themselves. Well, I think this is what the, what is shown in this poll is that uh, societal change doesn't happen overnight. But I look at this as a positive and as an opportunity. Uh, I think it reflects the importance of having people who are visible minorities, different sexual orientation, a lot of women involved. Uh, because when people do see themselves reflected in leadership across the country, whether that's in business or in politics, um, you know, I think that that uh, gives hope to people and they want to become more engaged and involved. I also think that there's a real demographic shift happening. Uh, I think, you know, the breakdown of that, obviously, not just with millennials, but basically people kind of under the age of 45, have various different perceptions uh, than maybe some older voters in the country.
So, well, you know, I'd, I'd, it's disheartening to say, you know, some people just need your face on, uh, you know, a, a style of, of headdress uh, or like, oh, you know, is going to discount that. Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of positive here. And I think really what it is, and in terms of introducing Jagmeet to the country, this is where, this is how you take down those stereotypical views and those preconceived notions. And frankly, the racism is when you get to know somebody, when your neighbor, when your colleague, when your friend uh, is different from you and you realize, well, this person's really just like me and they're a really good person. Uh, so I tend to look at this as a real opportunity for the NDP. Okay, well, one of the things that this touches on, of course, is, is different cultures, different parts of Canada. Quebec is preparing to run essentially a human rights tribunal looking into racism in that province. Concerns about uh, some of the attitudes that are there, especially towards prominently displayed religious symbols that people wear somewhere on their person. Uh, Greg, some of the sovereigntists aren't too happy about this. They see it as an attack on Quebec society. Does Quebec have a problem? I, you know, someone recently said to me, Quebec has a problem because they talk about this. You know, there are other provinces that may have similar issues, but they're not talked about as, as broadly. It, it's, very, it's very odd. The Parti Québécois tried to run a campaign on this, on their Charter of Values, and failed. Um, it is a lowest common denominator form of politics. We saw Kelly Leach try this in the last federal, uh, sorry, the, the uh, conservative leadership. And in the last federal campaign, she was part of a call for a, uh, a tip line that didn't work out so well for them as well. I don't sure, Quebecers rejected the Charter of uh, Values. Um, and you know, we were just talking about Mr. Singh. He did very well in Quebec. He had, I think, a third of the delegates. He got a lot of money out of Quebec perhaps the most. So I think there, there is a bit of a, an issue there. And again, I go back to what I said earlier. This is a legislature that has a huge religious symbol in the form of a crucifix. Is that going to come out? Is that what the Parti Québécois is suggesting? I would really like to see what they would have to say about that. Jerry? Well, I think the problem here is, is one of a perspective. For a lot of the separatists and nationalists in Quebec, just to ask the question, is Quebec racist, is racist. Because I think they, they, at least the separatists and the nationalists, view themselves as a persecuted minority within Canada. And so for you to suggest that you're persecuting people, that runs against their narrative. It runs against their sort of mythic understructure. So yeah, they're going to, they're going to fight back against that. They're going to push back against that. And what that does is allows them to mobilize their base. And I think that, you know, tribalism, again, is a very powerful emotion in politics, and if the PQ and the bloc can mobilize any 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 sort of uh, traction from this, then they'll gain from it. Uh, so I think if the Liberal government thought that this was going to create some kind of dispassionate, rational analysis about racism in Quebec, I think they were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Sally? I, I just remind people of the, the context with which uh, this rhetoric over the, the human rights examination of racism in Quebec is. Um, Never forget the politics that happens. Unfortunately, sometimes you, you'd like to think that everything kind of happens uh, for the purest of intentions. Um, but obviously, um, you know, the more nationalist, separatist uh, fronts, uh, uh, political elements in Quebec are going to be using this as a wedge issue. We're not too far away from a provincial election in Quebec. Uh, you just had a recent by-election there. And so, um, you know, I think it's important that every province, frankly, looks at, uh, examines kind of racism looks within themselves okay. within their own borders of how we can combat things. Um, I think ultimately there's a lot of politics being played with this and I uh, unfortunately don't see it dying down anytime soon. I think we're probably going to see it ramp up. Okay. I, I'm going to wrap that part just because we do have a long weekend topic that I promised all of you we would get to and that is um, mm. drinking and canoeing. Uh, <laughs> some beautiful weather across Canada, so lots of people planning to be out their canoes. Uh, federal government now is looking to pass a law that could see your driver's license removed if you get caught drunk paddling. Uh, Greg, <laughs> really, driver's license? Is that not a little bit far for someone who's having some beer and canoeing? I'm going to tell you a little part of my resume you may not be aware of, but a long time ago I was a small craft water safety instructor. I used to be able to flip a canoe back into the water by myself long before I discovered beer. Um, but speaking of beer, beer on the dock, you know, 
if you're in the if you're in a boat, there's no need for it. Unfortunately, I'm from Eastern <laughs> Canada. There are so many people that have never learned to swim, refuse to wear life jackets. Honestly, I'd love to make some Canadian jokes about canoes, but really, I think there's just no no place for it. As Sally's from Newfoundland, you know, we've seen a lot of tragedy over the years. So I think you know, leave the beer on the dock. Okay, and I just want to correct here because I, I mistakenly said this is a new law. It's in fact the law they were about to get rid of, but when uh, the coverage of it came up, the government changed their mind and decided to keep it on the books. Jerry, do you think it's required? Is it keeping people safe? Well, Mercedes, this is going to reflect a lot about me, okay? I don't know anything about this issue, but when I saw this story, the only thing I could think of, what a great visual for an attack ad. Uh, a drunk <laughs> canoeist. And, I, and I'm not sure... I'm not sure how we'd use it, but it would be great. You know, Trudeau or something, paddling and he's drunk or, you know, something. It, it, I'm just throwing that out there for the, for, the, for the Conservative Party. You should do something with this. Okay. Nice canoe. And, and, and Sally, you know, of course, you know, there's nothing funny about people drinking and potentially drowning, but is it a bit of an overstep to say that you're going to take away someone's driver's license if they're found to be intoxicated in a canoe? Well, I'd like to know just how drunk we're talking here. Like, is this a, like a point, uh, you know, zero eight? Uh, like, like driving a car, if you're over point zero eight in a canoe, that you're then going to lose your driver's license? I mean, that, that does seem like a bit much to me. I did not realize that it was law, and I have to confess, I don't know if I'm going to incriminate myself here. I have had a couple of years and, and been in a canoe before. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, what it comes down to, obviously, safety, you know, for crafts, you know, motorboats and whatnot that could actually injure people, 100%. Uh, but the other thing I think of is here is how much money is going to be spent enforcing, uh, you know, busting somebody on a paddleboard or a <laughs> kayak or in a canoe for a couple of beers, right? So I mean, what I love, though, is, you know, given the, you know, sometimes the fetish, fetishization of uh, Canada versus the United States and how great we are, there is something very quaint that this is something we're talking about today when they're debating the gun regulations down in the United States. I'm having visions now of, uh, you know, some Mountie in his red surge paddling up to people on the lakes over the weekend. <laughs> trying, to, trying to keep that breathalyzer Carrying steady. Carrying out a rest. So our message, uh, don't drink and paddle from your Friday strategists. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you.